Hey everybody, thanks so much for checking out our channel. Uh, my name is Steve Moore. I'm the owner of Run More, this brick and mortar running shop located on Main Street in Westminster, Maryland. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the new Hoka Bondi 7. This shoe was originally due to come out in August of 2020, but with everything going on, it got pushed back to September. We have been excited to have this shoe on our wall because the Bondi 6 was a two year run shoe. So it had been up on the wall and not a whole lot of updates besides a few color changes over the last two years. So this is a nice big update that we were anxious for. And also just because it got pushed back, we were really getting short on sixes. So a lot of people were having a hard time finding and filling orders on the six as they were waiting for the release of the seven. So uh, the Hoka Bondi 7 is a max cushion neutral shoe. So if you're somebody who severely under pronate, over pronates, somebody who really wears out the medial side of their shoe, this might not be the best option for you. But for everybody else who maybe has a little bit of under pronate, excuse me, of over pronation or a little bit of under pronation, um, this is going to be a great option for you. So to compare this to another shoe in that same category, uh, I'm going to just give a couple specs to the Brooks Glycerin. The Brooks Glycerin is another very popular max cushion neutral shoe. So the Bondi weighs in at 10.9 ounces on the men's side and about nine ounces on the women's side. So just to give you a comparison, the Brooks Glycerin comes in at 10.2 ounces and about nine ounces on the women's side. So even though they look very different, they're both shoes that you can sort of pull for the same person. They're gonna be somebody that needs just some great everyday cushion, something that you can pop around in, something you can do some long miles in, etc. So where does that fall in as far as on the Hoka lineup? So I'm just gonna do a quick break breakdown of, of sort of some light shoes down to the heaviest shoes so you can sort of see where this falls in line with other Hoka's. We get asked quite frequently the differences between each model. So we thought we'd just take a quick second here to sort of show you the breakdown. So um, if you're looking at something that's real like a racing shoe, we're talking about something like the Carbon X. And even when you look at some of these lighter weight shoes, you can see that little Hoka roll that makes them so famous, that meta rocker rolling sensation to efficiently move you from your heel to your toe. So you can see it maybe a little more pronounced in this carbon plated racing shoe, the Carbon X. Up next is another neutral shoe. This is the lightweight, maybe a speed day, maybe, maybe a short miles or a quick gym or whatever. This is the Hoka Rincon. This came out of August of this year. Very light, very airy, $115. Moving up to sort of the most popular Hoka shoe in the neutral, well definitely in the neutral category, is the Hoka Clifton. This came out this summer as well. It's your mid cushion neutral shoe. So our Rincon was our light cushion shoe. This is our mid cushion shoe. This is your great everyday, running, walking, whatever, mid cushion, neutral. Its stable sibling is the Iraqi. Mid cushion, stable shoe, looks like the Clifton, but it has this extra level of density around the midfoot and wrapping around the heel to give some extra arch support and just some extra stability and guidance if needed. Then on the max cushion side, we have the Bondi 7. This is your big, biggest cushion neutral shoe that Hoka makes. And then if you need that stable companion shoe, we have the Gaviota. So the Gaviota, again, same big max cushion, but it has that extra level of density wrapped around from the arch to the midfoot around the heel to give some extra stability if you're somebody who over pronates or under pronates severely. So our Bondi is our biggest neutral shoe that they make. I will say that all Hoka shoes do have that inherent stability. That's one thing that they very much pride themselves on is if you're somebody who just has a little bit of off in your stride, just needs a little bit of extra support, most of your neutral Hoka shoes are gonna give you that additional support. They are sort of built in this big channel um, designed to hold you in place. They like to say that they're like a kid in a booster seat or like I like to use the, the analogy of like a canoe in water, that you're set below, you're on the water line. So it's a little harder to tip out. If you're like a paddle boarder, if you're standing on top, tall on your shoe, you're easier to, to tip over. So their idea is being you're, level, you're, you're inside the shoe and that's why when you look at it, People say, I look, I, I feel really tall in it. You're not sitting up here. You're sort of wrapped in the middle here. And this nice big cushion kind of holds you all around. So we've seen people that come in that are used to wearing a stability shoe that come in and say, I'm, I'm so traditionally in a posted shoe or a shoe with that extra density on the medial side because I tend to wear my shoes out this way. But a shoe, especially this shoe, uh, the Bondi, will give you a little bit of extra support there. So don't feel deterred if you're somebody who just feels a, has a little bit of wear pattern on the medial side to try this shoe. Especially if you're somebody who, who has a little bit of medial wear and there's no real injury stuff going on. You're feeling pretty healthy and happy, um, but you just tend to naturally be in a stability shoe. You can probably get away with it in this Bondi. So um, just a couple quick differences between the six and the seven as we break down this shoe. Uh, I'm gonna try to get, get in here a little bit and if you're looking at the heel cup on this shoe and then we're gonna look at the Bondi six, you can see 
we're way more padded on the new one. They really did a good job of stepping up that plush step and feel when you're putting on the seven versus the six. It just feels good. That extra, that extra plushness around the heel does give just a little bit more support here. And again, even though the weight hasn't changed much, it just kind of feels nice on your foot. If you're looking at the side here, you can see all these little overlays that wrap around the shoe all the way around here. Got a little bit of texture to it. Um, they're gonna hold and secure your foot a little bit better all the way around. So if you're somebody who seams out a little bit, that should hopefully protect you. I know some people are looking at it and gonna say, now I feel like it's gonna be too tight and restrictive around your foot here. I don't think that's gonna be the case at all. I think it's gonna more probably help more on the durability side than it's gonna feel just being constricted in the shoe. I popped one on and I compared it to a Bondi 6 and I didn't feel like I was any less secure in the shoe. I definitely felt much more breathability in the upper uh, it's designed to feel a little bit more airy. It's designed to be a little bit breathe more breathable, and it does feel that way. So I wouldn't worry, even though you're sort of looking at it and go, that that's always a cause for concern. Is am I going to feel like I don't have the extra width that I need? That shouldn't be an issue in my opinion. And then if you're somebody who's been in, you know, something like like the Clifton, you can kind of see the difference. These are both same size. You can see you are a little bit wider naturally in the Bondi. And even if you put on a Bondi and you look down at it on your foot, it kind of has a natural splay out like you can sort of see that it goes down so like your base of the shoe feels a little bit more secure and landed on the ground it's not narrow in the shoe going out this way it's sort of going down this way to give a little bit of extra stability there and it does feel like it's giving you a little extra a little more width on that shoe so a max cushion neutral shoe is great for somebody who's gonna be on their feet all day somebody doing longer miles um, we're in Maryland and there is this superstar runner named Mike Wardian who is out of the DC metropolitan area and he wears this shoe and he's doing some of his crazy long distance runs. Um, it is a great shoe for people that are doing a marathon, a half marathon, people that are on their feet all day that need some good cushion. We get a lot of people, that's one of our most popular questions, not just on the messages down below in our videos, but we get a lot of emails or people that walk in and want to know the differences of like, should I get this shoe versus this shoe. And it's really hard to say like, you know, talking to somebody or, I mean, we'll get emails that just say, Sh I'm on my feet, should I get a Clifton or a Bondi? And to us, there's, there's a lot of factors that go into that. Um, I, I'll pull the Bondi for somebody and they say like, I'm hard on shoes, I wear through shoes faster, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, maybe a bigger frame person, so I want something that's not gonna break down on me in 200 miles. When you hold a Bondi versus a Clifton, this is gonna be lighter because it is a mid-cushion shoe, but the density level is much higher. It's, it's much more dense on your, on your Bondi than a, pair, than a pair of Clifton's. So you can sort of, maybe you don't feel that same like sink in squishy feel that you would on a Clifton, but you can tell just by putting it on that it's gonna get a little more miles. That's one thing, we'll have people that, that shop online with us or, or maybe just get a Clifton online or, or, or you know, some other place and they'll say, I, I love the Hoka's but I wanna try something else because it didn't give me that life expectancy. And you know, you'll talk to them a little bit and they'll say, well, that's my, it's been my everyday shoe and I'm looking at somebody who's you know, six foot four and full of muscles and they are breaking down on the shoe too hard because there is a trade-off. If you're putting on a shoe that weighs eight ounces and you're somebody who's really hard on your shoes and naturally, or you're on your feet all day and it's your running shoe, your gym shoe, your walk walking shoe, your everyday shoe, there's got to be some give there. You can't expect, in my opinion, to have a shoe that's air light, that's super easy, light, breathable, marshmallow on your foot, and then if you're going to crush the shoe because of just your natural lifestyle, it's going to break down faster. So I'll typically, when I find out their lifestyle, or they tell me a little bit about themselves and they say, you know, I'm just getting into running and I'm, I'm you know, I'm overweight and I'm getting into it and I'll say, it's fantastic. I would probably say, let's try the Bondi because it's, it's going to be probably a better experience for you. One nice thing going from, speaking of the Clifton and sort of how airy and soft it is compared to this shoe, if you're looking at your old Bondi and you're putting on the new Bondi, not only do you feel a little bit more, more plush around the heel, it's softer. That's one thing that Hoka has always really done is they want a nice, nice, nice marshmallowy soft shoes, but there is some trade-off as we just talked about. But this shoe is sort of, it's sort of towing the line between being something that's going to be more durable, but still has that soft feel. It's not as soft as a Clifton. It's not going to be like a Rincon where you sort of are sinking down into it, but just compared to the six, it is a softer shoe. So somebody it can still get, again, the best of both worlds there where you're gonna have something that's gonna be durable but still feel soft. Because we did have people that would come in and say, my friend said I should try, try a Hoka. And they'll put on a Bondi and they'll say, it just doesn't feel the way that it was sort of described to me by my friend. And we might say, well, which version did they have on? Or you know, we'll get in that conversation. But now you can really feel the difference between a Bondi 6 and a 7. It just feels a little bit squishier. So you'll still, you know, I, I still think you'll get the same durability out of it, but it just might be a little bit better step and feel and maybe a little bit closer to what people were expecting when they tried out a Hoka before is that they're going to get just a little bit more to it. And then especially when you compare it to something like the Gaviota, 
when that is sort of the common feel when people put the shoe on the gaviota and they'll say, you know, like, I don't feel any of that softness people are talking about. They may feel a little bit of the roll, but they might not feel that same softness because this is much more of a, of a Big Mac stability shoe. That color J there, their J frame, is made of a much denser material, so you can feel stable in it, but it might not have that same squishy feel. This is going to now give you a little bit of that squishy feel to it. And again, because it does have that inherent stability, if you're somebody who just naturally overpronates a little bit, this shoe should help you out. One thing I've noticed on the Bondi 6, and just because one nice thing about having that shoe for two years, quite honestly, is that when people were coming back over the two years, is we really like to look at shoes. We like when people come in and say, like, I've had this shoe and I wore it for just walking or I wore it for running or I wore it for gym, whatever they were doing. I like to see sort of how they've broken down on it. We noticed on the 6 a lot that people who naturally had a little bit of underpronation who kind of supinated to the outside of their foot, it almost seemed like they did it more in, in the Bondi. And so a lot of times, if somebody who was somebody who underpronated a lot, I was actually more apt to put them in the Gaviota than I was the Bondi, even though that shoe is technically a stability shoe, which would do even more of that. That little J frame on the outside, that little lip here seemed to help balance people out who severely underpronated and help put them back to neutral. So if you're somebody who really hard underpronates here and you're able to get to a shop like ours or get to a local running shop that carries Hoka, it would probably behoove you to try both on and just see what felt better for you for, your, for, some, for some underpronation there. I think the reason why it might be pushing somebody out further that way than they'd be expecting is Hoka's just naturally have a pretty nice sturdy arch to it. Even in a neutral version like the Bondi, the arch is, is a little bit higher than you would find in something companion shoe like the Glycerin or like a New Balance 1080 or any shoe in that category, even a neutral arch, while maybe not firm, is just set a little bit higher. So it can maybe just tilt you a little bit more to the lateral side. Uh, a couple of applications that I like this shoe for, uh, you know, again, it's a long distance shoe. It's an everyday, it's, a, it's a, a shoe that you can use for all day stuff. People going on a trip, I'm going across the country, I'm going across the world if you're allowed to. Uh, this is a great shoe to take along and you can use all day and kind of beat up. Long mile shoes, marathon, ultras, all that great stuff is great in this shoe. Really, the only thing I don't love a Hoka shoe for, uh, especially a shoe like this, is somebody who's gonna be doing a lot of like big gym stuff. If somebody's gonna be going out there and doing side to side mobility stuff, I just think it's a little bit off balance. And we hear a lot when people put it on is like you'll see people kind of doing their little gym stuff and shuffling around in the shoe, and they do feel a little bit off balance, not just because the stack height in the shoe is relatively high, but with that big canoe we talked about there, it can seem like it's a little more wobbly going that way. To me, any activity that's gonna be just having you going forward and, and ahead of you, this is a great option for. We even have people that come in here that are told by doctors, told by you know PTs and such, if you're coming off a bad injury, that a Hoka is a great brand to get into, to kind of relearn how to walk, to get used to that really nice heel toe roll. Uh, so this has been a great shoe. And just that brand in general has been really nice to kind of get you familiar with getting that nice smooth heel to toe transition. Um, so anyway, that's our breakdown of the new Bondi. It is out. Uh, it is $150. Uh, you can get it on our website. Use promo code RUNMORE and it'll save you 10% and ship it out for free. One last thing I almost forgot, and this is actually a big thing that people are really excited about, is the width option. So the Bondi had come in a standard width, but this is the first Hoka shoe that on the men's side will come in a super wide 4E. That is a really great change that a lot of people were clamoring for. I'm surprised they didn't do it on the Gaviota just because we see more shoes in that max stability side that come in a super wide. But anyway, it's a great change. So now on the men's, uh, men's Bondi, you can do your standard D, you can do a 2E, or you can even do a 4E, which are all available on our website. We're very excited about it. Not all color options are available in all widths, but there are two options that are gonna be available in a super wide. So great change. Unfortunately, on the female side, they're just doing a standard and a wide. So you'll have an option for a B and a D. But as of yet, there is no super wide 2E option available on the female side. So hopefully down the pipeline, but as of yet, two widths on the women's, three widths on the men's, and a great update for them. And a lot of people are very excited about it. And I think we'll continue, well, I know we'll continue to see shoes that they're going to start rolling out that will end up having um, more widths available to it and not just a standard 2E. But they'll have 40s and like the Gaviota 3 and such coming down the pipeline. So the Bondi 7, great shoe, available on our website. Uh, any questions, feel free to leave it down below. And just one last little thing. I know a lot of people call it the Bondi. I call it the Bondi because almost everybody who walks in the door calls it a Bondi, including my Hoka rep. So I know it's technically a Bondi. We like calling it the Bondi, so don't give me a hard time in the comments about it. Thank you so much for watching our channel and supporting our little running shop here in Westminster. I really appreciate it. Stay safe, and we'll see you out there.